morning. We probably here today and the sweet sweet one tomorrow. Getting there. She's taken six months. Well, they walk Friday for F3 and we're hoping to start work this week. So long it's just painting um, new kitchen cabinets. And you're going to turn the air down. It's not blowing out. You turned it down? Yeah. The king's soup is right here. Are you doing any office this afternoon? I'll bring you two boxes. So you have some? I, I got, got I got four two packs. So okay. there's eight. Well seven now. So okay. I can use one. And the Bradman kid. So we drove around for like 45 minutes and hit some small places. I have to take the kids with me every time. Every time, yeah. Um and so finally I called and like, check this kid or something. I should have just come here first. But um so then I'm bribing them, letting them pick out hot wheels at the grocery store so that they'll be brave and not wiggle. And I did it in the car seat and the car strapped it. Okay.
extend the life of for Tom and Warren to stay on the board of several months. I'll second. I have a question while we're on the issue of um, expanding the board and extending. Um, I tried to get on the LHA website. <laughs> And um, part of it doesn't show on my screen, so I can't see the whole thing. Um, but while I was on there, I went to the, the uh, headings, the menu part, which is in bold, um, and I could find nothing about the advisory board and nothing about applying for the advisory board. I um, uh, there were a couple of people that were recommended to me. Then I put out the word and I was going to contact them and I went, oh, I want to check on on site, on the website as to how we do this and I couldn't find anything. Okay, so so we definitely have the, the advisory board is listed there with the members under the about yeah. and then boards tab, but it does not have information about applying, so I think that's a good idea to okay. go ahead and put okay. that out there. Move on to item number five, development and our project updates, alignments with goals, A is NOFA vouchers. So that's me. Um, <laughs> so we got a notice from HUD stating that there was a lot of um, opportunities for new vouchers, different kinds of vouchers. So I wanted to go through all of the opportunities that are coming up. The housing choice vouchers have been re renewed for um, another year. And that was part of the funding, so that doesn't give us any new vouchers, but it does fund what we have. Um, there is new housing choice vouchers coming down. It's a middle-based um, voucher addition, and we will be receiving um, notice probably within the next couple of months on how many, and we can accept them more than one So are we just waiting on a dollar amount or the actual number? The, the actual number. Yeah, okay. So they'll give us a number and um, so they give us dollars too? Yeah, the dollars. Um, but again, that's not going to be until probably the further end of the Um There's a hat set aside. And I don't think, I don't think we're eligible for this. For the prevention of termination due to insufficient funding or unforeseen circumstances. So, if the LHA didn't have enough funding to um, pay for the vouchers that we already have, then we can apply for additional funding. But we're, we don't qualify for There's also a, a voucher called ten, tenant protection vouchers. So, those are vouchers for when a, a property is being taken off of affordable housing. List and in becoming private, that there's vouchers available for those people that are living in the, in the property. We don't have any in Longmont that are um, coming off of the commercial housing list, so we won't be applying for that one. Um, there's different fundings for administration costs, um, and we don't qualify for any. It's, it's additions, if there's an limited admin fees for if you had several counties that you were operating in, you want to do that. Um, if we got, there's a special admin fee rate and that's for home ownership programs, we don't have home ownership programs under our voucher program. There's also funding coming down for head bash funding, and that's the veterans, um, vouchers for veterans, and I think I think we might be able to apply for those. A separate bill for which is enormous of funding available for you and funding down probably in the next couple of months. We'll see if it's for either refunding or uh, funding already dash vouchers or if 
we can apply for this We won't know that until the um, There's funding for mainstream vouchers, and that's the funding, um, that funding is for existing mainstream vouchers. And we don't have any mainstream vouchers, so it doesn't give us an opportunity to get any. So it's just for things that already have it. And then there's um, in a family unification program. And I've never heard of this. Anymore. But this is um, this will be issued with a separate note for, and this is for vouchers for families to keep them together, and for foster care that foster care for kids that are coming out of foster care. Um, we have to show a need, and so I'm going to kind of research that um, prior to the note and see if we can show a need here. You know, what is considered family or what? Is it parents, children, grandparents, and some it's, it's considered family? From what I from what I get it, it all it's it's all about kids really. Okay. So it's keeping the youth in, in the family and that kind of and that might mean that the whole family. And, you know, um, to keep the child. Mm -hmm. Is there a name for the kids? I don't Again, this is the first time I've ever heard of this one, so I'm not, I'm not really sure. I know some of the other federal pro, um, programs for those kids coming out of foster care, going into like low-income housing, they normally have a five-year period that they're eligible for that assistance. So they can be either work from like 18 to 23 and get those federal programs. You know, the other thing is the school district, we want to have space to be able to their uh, anyway, they have a guy that deals with it, people that are marginally homeless or homeless and students, and so they can give us their numbers. Yeah, they might have to deal with a lot of landscaping too. There's um, a project that just opened, Caraway with Baker, and they have um, a handful of vouchers for kids aging out of foster care. Um, so I don't know if you want to connect with them and see mm -hmm. what. Baker Housing, it's called the Caraway. Where is that? It's um it's in Adams County, it's basically like right at the end of US 36. You just head north around that area. I'm not as familiar with around there. But I went to their grand opening because it just looked really beautiful. Good to know. Thank you. I'll contact them. And then the last one is uh, moving to work. Um HUD has put out a no for, for 30 additional agencies to participate in an experiment for um, vouchers. And the moving to work, it's an asset building. It's, it's actually just um, to pay for a um, counselor to help people um, save. And you can use your admin fees to, to put into the savings accounts for them. Um, I don't know if any funding comes available with it. It's just that they waive a lot of federal regulations. And again, that's going to come out in the NOFA. I will, I will look into that. What I read was an, it, it's just funding flexibilities. And I don't think we're out of position to be too flexible because I'm this point. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I'll, I'll look and see if there's any funding that comes with it. I wonder if we could tie it to like the PI program. With the county, you know, we we used to fund the pipe program with the CDBG um, funds, and it was a difficult program yeah, to to get up and running and, and constant. Um, but that would be that's what I was thinking when I when I read this this pipe program that it would be something that we should partner with. Yeah, I need to start something so I'll be there. It might be helpful for like residents because it's one thing to just put money aside. And know like okay if someone's gonna match it it's another to like understand oh, like, money in general like yes. why and how it works and mm -hmm. when the benefits are long term and how to deny the urge to now. Yeah. <laughs> Check yeah. out the yeah. problem. Yeah. <laughs> what did you call that program? The high program, personal huh. investment something. Okay. Yes, we had um, under the rise program that was in the neighborhood. Um, with, with, there was a lot of financial um, advice given to the Rice families um, 
Shed the point guard building their credit um, and how to do that and um, uh, how to budget and how to and not just save but mm -hmm. how to budget and and um, there were and I probably mentioned this before out of nine families there were two of them that bought homes after five years of that program so it, 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 it the, the whole financial issue, the whole financial picture was presented. And um, if Kai does that, that would be. But that's, um, and there are rumblings in Walmart that they want to kick up the rice program again. So we might have resources here that can pull it together. Yeah, and I, I'm all for um, financial counseling. Yes, to yes. Um, our residents. Yeah, especially the families. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But again, I, I don't know the ins and outs of this. Mm -hmm. so. Does financial counseling offer through the senior centers? I think the senior center does have some financial counseling for. Um, but <coughs> I'm, I'm trying to think. Um, the, the counseling, the Boulder County counseling programs. We funded through the CDBG program. They provide financial counseling mm -hmm. to um, people in Longmont. Mm -hmm. CDBG yeah. yeah, that's any income level. Yeah. 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 So that's it. That's my report for the funding. Let's go on to B development updates. Okay, so just uh, talk about some of the highlights on progress we made since the last month. <coughs> for Village Place, we have um, Sarah Box, our she's going to be our, our consultant on this. She's the same one that consulted us on, on this recap. Mm -hmm. um, she, we have her under contract. We have put out a request for qualifications for uh, legal services. So far, we have one decline because we put a, uh, a not to exceed without authorization. So just some sort of controls, but even though flexible, if, the, if it was needed, um, we put that at one hundred thousand dollars. We got one decline so far. So, um, so, but we are, we still have it. the the proposals are due today, at the end of today, the end of day today, and so we will see what happens. Um, and then we're just doing document gathering, analyzing rent rolls, getting things prepped and ready to. Off on um, the Christmas 2 project we close on Friday. All right. Yeah. All right. Finally. Mm -hmm. um, it was a, a, we've talked about some of the, the challenges, obviously, the construction cost escalation, but then this is our first LiTech project we're putting ARPA funding through, and there's a lot of talk about how ARPA and LiTech go together. Um, and so we had to do a lot of due diligence and creativity to make sure. It played well with the equity structure. Um, we got that all sorted out. We got all the city funding passed to LHA and ready to, to go. So we're ready to rock. So they should start construction July 1st is their target. For the Hover, the land over by Hover. So this one's an LHDC asset currently. Um, the They purchased it for $800,000. Oh, I forget what year it was. 20. 14 or something, um, and they use city affordable housing funds to purchase it, so they have a loan that's due back to the city. So there's a couple things going on. We're talking about how that, that transfer of assets over to LHA could go and how to deal with the, the 800000 and then um, we've got a draft request for qualifications for um, a combo team. We want a one-stop shop. We want the team that knows how to work together. So. Um, Financial consulting on the deal, prefab development, and architecture all together. So that's what we're putting out for. It's just in draft form. If you'd like to check it out, you would be welcome. I would, I would welcome your feedback on that since this is the first real mass development like that we put out. Um, looking for a full team. The reason that we did that is A, it reduces the amount of procurement we have to do. but um, what we are, since we are looking to do a prefab option there, um, we know that there are, like Indie Well, for example, which we expect to propose, they 
have architects that are familiar with their product, they have partnerships with consultants. So we have not, it, it's just in barely draft form, so we'll be working on that still for a little bit before we put it out, but that's where we are with that. So if anybody's interested and would like your feedback on it. I would like to look at it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have we targeted the number of units and the type of project? What kind of parameters do we get? So we, so far, it's a range based on what we can get there density-wise. We know that we are targeting family units, so um, what we know is possible is we could do a mix of some townhome style units and some staffed apartments, mm -hmm. you know, larger size apartments on top. Um, that's just what we know is possible, but the RFQ would, we'll see what people can and propose, but so far going with the general family units, we know that we could uh, get between 30 and I think, I think the number was between 30 and 70 is max. And so we just said somewhere, but we just said a range. Um, obviously we want more, but we also want to make sure that it's the, the character of what we're going for. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we've been speaking with planning just to see what kind of entitlement process we could be going through. And, that type of thing. So that is in the works. Uh, next, we're, we, now that we have Katie Pung on board, we are just rocking and rolling. So affordable assisted living. We have been, we, if, if you need a refresh on that, we're talking about researching ways to use our ARPA funding to provide a pipeline for LHA residents that are in need. Um, so we have been doing a lot of research and we have a lot of good resources out there right now that are kind of kismet coming together. So NDC, the National Development Council, we have, have the city has a contract with them to help on, on a, an array of development issues. And they have a lot of experience doing affordable assisted living, like LIHTC uh, funded assisted living. And then um, we met with another developer on another project and he said, he just threw out assisted living and my ears perked up. I chatted with him after, and he has worked with NDC and Affordable Assisted Living in Illinois. And we're just having conversations around the community. Uh, we meet with Cinnamon Park, or Senior Housing Options later today, just to find out kind of what their, their operational structure is, and using Medicaid. Um, and then we've already been talking to Hover Communities. They have land. They also have a need. And um, there's potentials that we're just chatting about to see if, if something you know works for all involved, where we could each have a pipeline, one build with half and half split units. So the, the challenge here is we can, you know, our specialty is providing units and doing the development side, which that's not their specialty. We need their specialty to come in and do the operational side. So we just need to make sure that there's a funding source that's reliable long term to see if we can put something together. So we might have a development consultant, a developer, land, and a, and a service provider might be coming together. Still researching and making sure it works, but that's kind of what's cooking. But so our, our <coughs> hope would be that it'd be from family units, but Hover's probably still going to be focusing on senior housing. If, if it wasn't built. Assisted moving. Oh, it would be assisted oh, so, moving. Yeah, the Hover land is family yeah. units. Okay. We're talking to Hover communities down on. Oh, this would be a completely yes. separate. Yes. Deal. Okay, cool. Um, they, okay. they do um, senior independent living, assisted living, and skilled nursing care there. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll yeah. see what, what pans out. But right now we're discussing with people what their needs are and what, what they can bring to the table. Um, the Royal Mobile Home Park, um, if you recall, that's the, the mobile home park that washed away in the flood. The city owns that land. Now the flood improvements have been made. It will be out of the map floodplain here probably in 2023, approved by FEMA. Um, so we are chatting right now just internally at the city with uh, planning and looking at the riparian setbacks and just seeing what kind of proposal we could put there. But the intent is to do uh, rental units basically go as high as we can in that area. It's close to first and main transit station, transit oriented development. We're talking to NDC about that since there's potential for new market tax credits and other kind of financing in that area. Um, so we're just doing some 
city internal due diligence right now to see what makes most sense at that site. How big is that site? It's three and a half acres before, um, the before the setback, but we are talking about what makes sense with the setback there for the city staff. It's a unique area. It's, yeah. It goes long. Yeah, and the, the, the riparian area is defined. Um, so we're, we're strategizing what we could do there to make it make sense and also still have enough room to develop. Well, with the, with the change in you know, the construction on the river, what is the floodplain now in that area? It's constrained. I mean, it's still, it's still the needs the FEMA fine. mapping, but the setback still applies regardless of the floodplain limit. Um, and that's not, it's not continuous, but so. So internal, internal work. Well, part of that is, so we're um, going to sign the agreement with RTD on the transit-oriented development further north. Sorry, pull that out just a little bit. Uh, further north in about a month. And so as we look at the broader transit-oriented development in that area, there may be some additional opportunities to aggregate land and use this as part of that so we can build affordable in throughout instead of just concentrating it. So um, we're still early stages of that. Yeah, there's some options that are Okay. Right, so I'll 
to the city resident engagement process. So this is really just a, a, a reminder that this is not going away, but with Michelle's departure, I have Michelle's uh, notes, I've got the information from Lauren and Cameron. We need to take it and review and start summarizing the priorities by property, because they did vary by property, we can see that or not with that. Um, so I'm just keeping this on as an ongoing thing that it's that we have it and it will be summarized here shortly. Is there any any view about that that we should use as we go forward with that? You should get a lot of spare time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely not an hour like that was every lady. It was yeah. It was almost two. And that was because I had to leave to take my kid to a birthday party. I would have stayed longer. It was actually super enjoyable. I had a great time getting to know them and just listening to their experiences. Things that they were happy about, concerned about, writing a little bit about. So, yeah, it was great. So we have a, we've got some work ahead of us, but it is on our, it is happening. You go awesome. I did. Did you get my answers, though? I think so. I gotta double check. I remember. If not, I'll get it. The one general comment I make is that they really seem to appreciate the opportunity to get feedback in conversation. Mm -hmm. So it might be worth thinking about whether this is more of a regular process as not the two years ago. Yeah. Um, you know, I went over it three different times, and every time the person I was talking with had a lot more to say than an hour. And then there were always people who wanted to kind of, oh, are you talking about the box? <laughs> I'm seeing your phone. So. <laughs> it's almost nice to have like a standing office hours mm -hmm. at different properties or dating where someone can be Because <clears throat> uh, then if people are offloading concerns more regularly, then it doesn't pile up and become a three hour event. But if we're looking for a purpose for this board, some advice that we can give to the council that this is a good opportunity to connect with people. And honestly, they have some great ideas. <clears throat> they, they live in the property. And they know what they want to see. So, so one of the things they talked about pretty much was communication. And that's mm -hmm. kind of the way it, it goes. Yeah. Well, that's, that's one of the things that as an uh, advisor we're that we can help help with that. Uh, let's think, especially looking at the rest of this agenda, unlike, I think the staff needs help. <laughs> uh, that's something we could, you know, it's a gap we could fill. Yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because as we work through things like evictions and other components, mm -hmm. it's kind of hard for us as staff to be yeah. getting that information yeah. because right. We're on this side of it, trying to work through it. I think that would be a huge help for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So, on to item six items for input from the LHA board, or input to the uh, LHA board of commissioners. A is record retention policy. That is me again. So, um, I had updated their retention requirements in 2011. So this is just kind of catching up with um, some new regulations. And it also pr promotes more of an electronic record keeping instead of paper. Yeah. We're, we're overwhelmed with, with paper. Um, we've got files and, and, and closets. And so we need to <laughs> return the dungeons. Did they offer any funding to help you go <laughs> from paper to electronics? Because that would be nice if you could hire people to help and for support. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We have, so we have paper. seven files for one person on the voucher program, and we don't need to keep them past the three years. So, mm -hmm. so, so it's 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 a lot of cleanup. Mm -hmm. um, but at least this gives us the opportunity to move forward. Yeah. Yeah, I'm doing that cleanup and hopefully get more of the files electronically instead of um, in paper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So, did you have any questions about it? Or? So, so my only question was like, when it says electronic slash paper, is it or? Or, yeah. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. And is it some sites, or is that the reason why in some sites it's maybe held electronic and some sites it's held paper, or it gives you the option? Of it just gives you the option. Um, I, I'd like to see most everything become electronic eventually. Yeah. <laughs> but this, this is more geared to electronic. Right. And then in terms of your electronic uh, file keeping, is it saved in some sort of database that makes it easier to find, or is it just, just all files on the network? It will be, it will be easier to find. Yeah, okay. You're working easier. on a base, right? You're working on a base. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. no, yeah, like so that's our record. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it will be filed and easier to access. Easier to access. Not easy, but easier. Well, it also has, also has controls on who has access to it, too. Yeah, and then we have backups and that the on base. So. And does on, on base have the capability of uh, removing the documents? In line with your purging. yeah, purging them in line with your document retention policy, or we put in dates. Yeah, yeah, we we can insert dates, and then you can sort by dates. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 What is it on Mac? Yeah, yeah. 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 Lucian was working on looking at looking at that, but then she resigned. So our new records retention person for the city will help us figure that out. I think it's good not to have things automatically purge because if the dates are entered in wrong, right? I have just a couple of questions. And they just really are sort of, you know, I'm understanding here. So this three years after completion of contracts, is that a federal guideline? Basically, you know, these are all federal guidelines. Okay. All right. I was just I was wondering where that number came from. Yeah. Um, where you have on employee excuse me, employee applications unsuccessful, it says two years after date of application. I'm trying to figure out why we even keep those. It requires you to keep them for two years. It's after they apply, yeah. after they've been unsuccessful. Yeah. Probably relates to some labor law. Yeah. Or it's just, um, it's um, yeah. the plan yeah. of yeah. improper discrimination. Yeah. Yeah. Discrimination. Yeah. yeah. Oh. They have to keep the record in case, I think people have two years statute of limitations mm -hmm. come back to yeah. 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 Legal stuff. <laughs> Somebody pop that one in there. And then on the last page where it has um, reasonable accommodations, uh, number two, written reasonable accommodations, and then you go down farther and it's another reasonable accommodation. Uh, what's the difference between those two other than the one says medically and the other one does not? So I'm, I'm lost. Where are you? Last page. Last page? Yeah. Reasonable accommodation request if they contain medically sensitive information. And then the one up above that number um, one says written reasonable accommodation determination. I was just wondering what the difference was other than the medical medically sensitive information. So so it's um, that's the best section. Oh, okay. So the the written reasonable accommodation is from the tenant and what accompanies them is the medical, and so it's the medical part that needs to be destroyed okay. and not kept. The, the written request from the, the family is kept. Okay. Okay. The medical is destroyed. Okay. 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 I was just going to suggest that if it was helpful for resources to like volunteer to scan documents to help convert to electronic, I would be happy to help with that. You know, because I know how intensive that can be. It's very generous. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you are for sure. You are going to be organization and then we had to go COVID and we were at home. It was a lot of, of 
documents you couldn't find <laughs> unless you went into the office. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's another reason why this is important so we can, like, we're having staff that are HCB staff that they that sometimes they're coming on site because we've been short on property managers just being here mm -hmm. and they need access to their stuff wherever yeah. they are. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, 6B, Section 3 plan. Do we need, a, do we need an approval for that? Uh, this gets approved by the board July 5th, but really this is more okay. for input okay. before it goes there. Mm -hmm. So same with this one, this section okay. will also go July 5th. Well, if the advisory board wants to make a recommendation for approval to go. Um, yeah, why don't we do that? Okay. Can I get a motion or a recommendation? To move the uh, regular attention policy to the commit board commissioners. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Uh, vote. Uh, yes, say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Uh, 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 section 3.1. That's me too. <laughs> <laughs> so, that requires that um, that all housing authorities have a section 3 plan. Section 3 is for development type projects. And um, any any time LHA puts any funding into a not maintenance but some type of construction, mm -hmm. if um, they put money into it, then the, they have to follow the Section Three requirements. And then Section Three is just a way for um, local housing authorities to help employ tenants. It's usually it's usually for um, public housing tenants. But since there's no public housing tenants here, we we look at life at mm -hmm. properties, and we also look at the voucher program. And so it's just it's just a mechanism for HUD to to get um, preferences for those those um, participants to be hired on on construction mm -hmm. projects. So. So <clears throat> any construction job that they could do, anything, anything related to the construction, uh -huh. even though it might be in the office of construction and that doing office kinds of things. If we, if the LHA hires somebody to do mm -hmm. because of a construction, because of a construction project, mm -hmm. we have to follow the section three rules. Um, if the construction contractor is paid over a hundred thousand dollars for the project, then they have to follow section three rules when they start hiring for that project, specifically for that project. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. So really it's not us to necessarily follow, it's us to monitor the contractors to make sure they're following. We them. have to anytime LIJ puts a penny into a project, okay. it, it then we have to follow. So when we do our procurements, mm -hmm. we have to. Um, there's a section three contractors. If, if they're, you know, if fifty percent, if they, it's really hard to explain. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, it's a it's a three day training for right. figuring this stuff out. Yeah. But they would have to. They would have to um, follow. For example, like unspoke BCHA didn't hire anybody. Pinker, our contractor, is a Section 3 contractor, so their staff, they follow Section 3. Right. Mm -hmm. They're certified, so that when I had to do the compliance reporting, all I did was just say, they're certified. Yeah. 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 You see, you yeah. hard no one. Yeah. Pinker is certified. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it is very complicated. It took me a while. I was like, why? What are we doing? I, I know, and they changed it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just recently, and that's the reason we have this new um, Section 3 policy. They, they changed the, the way that you count employees, what a Section 3 employee looks like, um, the, yeah. how many Section 3 people have to be hired. So that is the reason that we have uh, this policy. It's actually the same policy with different regulations in here um, that CDBG has to follow. And are we typically following the, just the safe harbor benchmarks? Just Yes. Any questions? Oh, 
And I think while you're hearing from Tracy, just so you know, she and we haven't said this, she's our HCV and compliance manager. So this is her compliance work that she's doing, which I don't think we've had, you know, like in the Cameron for years. And so this is the compliance part of what we are Tracy. Or what Tracy moved over to do. <laughs> we sold her. Was, yeah. It's a little fire. We sold her. <laughs> that one's one for more. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's much more uh, refreshing to think about how we do comply than how we make up for our failure to comply. Right. Well, we're going to be in that mode for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll, if you are ready to, have a, another motion to recommend approval for the board. I'll make the motion. Uh, so we have a motion to approve the section three, section three plan for uh, Obama Housing Authority. Uh, <coughs> vote uh, yes, say aye. 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 Damas. Let's go on to uh, 6C, Briarwood Loan Refinance. Mm -hmm. So, um, Briarwood Loan was due April 1st, a balloon payment of about $457,000. Um, we decided to go back to First Bank and see if there's an opportunity to extend that. Um, so, we're looking at a 15 year loan so we don't get in that balloon payment situation again. Um, is that 4% interest rate that we locked in. And what they're gonna do is they went out for 500,000 um, based on the appraisal and everything that was done. We're, any cash back, we've decided to take that and create a replacement reserve for the Briarwoods because we do not have one. Um, there's no separate cash that was ever set aside to, to do any type of repairs of the Briarwood if needed. So um, they think it's gonna be probably around $30,000. Um, and then maybe we also probably need to establish a monthly um, allocation as well, um, because that's not that's not being done. Right? It, it's, well, because it, it was never part of a tax credit entity or anything like that that sets that up. Um, so maybe establishing some type of per unit cost, I think, um, by the end of this year to make sure that we're adding to that fund as we go. So we'll just include that uh, next budget from them too, to uh, add to the reserve as well. Is that what we'll need to do? Or yeah, that would be, yeah, 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 yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. So that may be, that may be, they, we may have to increase, increase rates, rents for the office for not necessarily the tenants, but I know the tenants haven't had, we haven't done an increase there. It's pretty nice. Yeah. So we'll have to look at the tenants to see what. What types are out there? Who, who has vouchers? Who doesn't have vouchers? Um, I think it's kind of half and half right now. There's half that has vouchers and half that so that increase the effect. Gardening, um, getting plants out there, picking out the 
to the needs of this the regular community feel there. Seven, uh, anybody have an item on part of that LHA work plan for goals? Yeah. It's kind of the one that's always on the agenda. Okay, this one is the DHLJ report. A, uh, a bit of operation is uh, one of the occupancy report. So the attached occupancy report, we did have a 1% drop in occupancy down to 94%. Uh, this is going to be due to our unit, our vet units. We're now currently at six or seven vet units in the portfolio. And then um, we had some maintenance, but now I'm fully staffed with maintenance. I have one maintenance who was um, injured, who was only working with limited capabilities. I had one out on surgery. But we hired, everybody's hired, everybody's back to full capacity. So we set some guidelines. I um, had a big maintenance meeting last week with my managers and the maintenance, setting time frames, getting everybody on the same page as how we're moving forward. All maintenance requests, maintenance time frames, turn requests, vendors. So we're hoping to see some. These numbers come up pretty quickly. Now that, like I said, we're fully operational on the man, uh, maintenance side. Um, the details are below, so I'll go over some of these. Um, with the property update, which is the next portion. But any questions on the occupancy? Lisa, are all of the net units having to be done by outside people? Correct. But it's a state requirement. You're no high enough where we have to Correct. for the drywall for the stuff. No, not all of them. Okay. Uh, as we go, uh, they're all listed here on the property update, so I'm going to read each one where we're at in the process on those ones. So for the property updates, uh, general property updates, so uh, we've had the fire department at many copies of conversations through May and June. I'm actually working with um, Michelle Bolton with the fire department right now because almost each one I heard different information from each fire department. Our lead's been at most of them. And some were really good and some were very iffy, so I'm trying to work with Michelle to get all departments on the same page so that I can get the same information to all residents so that we're not doing one thing at one property, one thing at another property, and it makes it really confusing going, oh, we were told this and we were told that, so we're trying to get all that organized right now with the fire department. But it was nice having them here. The residents really seem to enjoy it. A lot of them we paired with an ice cream social, and so we figured fire nice. Um, it was a great little opportunity for the residents to gather before the coffee conversations. Currently, next slide is um, attending our coffee and conversations and working with the residents who don't already have the low-cost internet or free internet. So they're going through how to get the upgraded modems, how to you know get higher speed, apply for the programs. They're even bringing with them list of residents who aren't receiving any rebates and trying to single out those residents afterwards to say, hey, we noticed you're you live at LHA property, you should automatically get this discount. You're not why. And so they're trying to help them get those discounts right then and there. Yes. Mm -hmm. You already need money this morning to confirm. So they will be here. Um, and that's probably in the federal program, but correct. federal dollars, the next month staff went out to get them basically covering 100% of the costs of certain individuals in their tier. So the Fed program pays the full rate. And, and then we reduce it and then in the Fed program there's a way we can reduce it and then we cover it internally. But as long as that program is being funded, they're paying us full freight for every customer. Right. And the only cost to the resident is if they decide to rent a modem. Um, it's eight ninety five per month, or they they have the option to buy their own modem. Um, and what they've done with next slide is LHA properties are already exempt, they don't have to do the application because all LHA properties are affordable already. They're just requiring an ID to show that, or proof that they live here with a police that they just recently moved here, so they don't have to go through that long application process. So they supervise it for LHA. Um, as the a calendar invite, LHA is hosting a fair housing training on August 11th at the museum. We're bringing in Wes, I cannot remember his last name now, but I work with some of the schools with the city to bring in a national fair housing trainer uh, to work 
with not just LHA staff, but HCI staff, our accountants, everybody who works with LHA, the senior services, who may interact with an LHA resident so that they kind of have the basics of fair housing and what we go through and what we have to watch for, just precautions to look out for, not to get themselves in any liabilities. So we'll be inviting you guys along with the city council as well. So I'll send out that calendar invite. We're expecting about 40 people. Um, and the focus of this fair housing training is not going to be reasonable accommodations and service animals, which a lot of fair housing trainings these days seem to gear towards. We want this more of the do's and don'ts, um, what you do for one, you do for all type situations. What kind of time frame are you looking at? It's 8.30 to 12.30, Erica? Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I think I'd be asleep by the time it started. It would be cooler. <laughs> so Senior Center will be providing all the refreshments for us. So. Going into the properties, so the suites. Um, currently we have the one youth meth unit that's um, in remediation. That's the one that we had to take down the studs from last year. Everything's basically in. They're now saying that we should have that one the second week of July, that in our possession and fully ready to rent out. Since preparing this, we did get meth results back on another unit, and that one is probably the highest we've ever seen. So that one definitely had to come down with studs. They had a test. Yeah, it was three times higher than the, the worst one. Did they test the bathroom on that? Not yet because they got to get the flooring up, so there'll be a secondary test. They had to test, they tested five feet outside of the unit in the hallway that had a readable level. So they went 10 feet, just got the results back to the 10 feet. The 10 feet is low enough so they don't have to decam contaminate that. But in that first five feet, there is another unit, so we tested that unit inside as well. We're and we're waiting for those results. So are we retaining their deposits or is there any way to get any money back from them at all? So we've been talking about this. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, there, so as it stands, there's really nothing out there that really is a, a true threat of consequence. Mm -hmm. um, when by the time, sometimes by the time we get the testing done, they're gone, they're gone. Oh, yeah. um, oh, yeah. In this instance, we are going to see what we can do about pursuing a, a civil case potentially, um, because we might have a window of opportunity still. But generally, what we have talked about doing and that we think is a good investment is you can do uh, Amazon, which you've been doing just at home tests as a preliminary screening, and then you bring in the, the professionals if you get a reading. We've been talking about uh, for any new move-in, doing a preliminary test, showing those results and having some a new tenant say, look, this is a clean unit, mm -hmm. and then on recertification every year, we want to test every unit cool. at this point. Um, it's, it's just to, to show residents that we are watching this, that we take the safety of the neighbors very seriously, mm -hmm. and that is some sort of threat of consequence. And so if we can, especially for new move-ins, if we have that um, clear result, and if it ever comes up not clear, then we have a before and after. Mm -hmm. um, eventually, that could be relied upon. For now, it's just a recertification, and if it comes up, uh, we, you know, we can't necessarily say it was definitely you or not, but it's just at least something out there that shows that we are taking this seriously. There are consequences to this because well, it's that, just crazy. That really would fit with anything related to maintenance in the property. Right. Because we go in afterward and inspect, mm -hmm. you know, uh, how it's been used and if it's normal use or excess, mm -hmm. and this has become part of it. So I, I think that's a fantastic yeah. process. Yeah. So I sent everything to our attorney on Friday because they're working on our lease. But they're also going to work on the disclosure addendum because my yeah. is doing something like this already at a lot of property because I've been doing my research. They have a big, I guess, meth problem in Montana. So landlords have started doing this, mm -hmm. um, testing mm -hmm. beforehand, having a disclosure that they sign off on stating that management has the right to test annually, if not more frequently. So I think at the suites, this is going to be a big 
deteriorate or as people start hearing this and want to move into the suites, when they find out we're doing this, they may not even want to sign that lease. Mm -hmm. Well, well it's also there. going to tell them not to have people stay with them that might be right. right. But there, yeah. yeah, that too. But there are also people that aren't going to go to the lease because of the protocol. Mm -hmm. And if we're doing that, then the message is going to be this is going to get abated wow. and it's going to be less and less to worry about. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we've, we're, there's two signs to this. Part of it kind of going back to. Is it Sunset Heights or Bluebird? It's you know. still TV. <laughs> Good. Well, I like Sunset Heights better. Anyway, one of the things they were talking about in the work that we're doing in Fleetwood Recovery Cafe there is to do a sober living floor. Right? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. we think that's important. We don't have that in our portfolio. Um, so, so that's a piece of this as well. The, the scary part in this is what are we going to find? And how much is that going to cost? Mm -hmm. But um, when we talked about it, I did say we probably want to start having conversations with our insurance company ahead of time. Because long term, the sooner we catch it, the, the less it costs to abate. Mm -hmm. The more on top of it we are, the less we're going to get the insurance over right. time as we're being But we don't want to do it without them knowing about it because I could, they could start seeing a rush of claims and then the next thing you know we're in a pickle. So we want to do that in conjunction with them. In terms of the one that's the highest number that we've ever seen, um, you know, they will have to test once they pull the drywall and everything else out. And um, I, I honestly, I'm concerned what we're going to find in the in the wood and the concrete. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because we've seen other units of concrete that has been contaminated that they had to grind. Um, so this one could be a really expensive unit. Wait and see the impact on the adjacent unit. The good news is they don't share HVAC, so that's not a problem. But all that being said, um, I have operationally said we need to go with this individual um, because it it is so bad that we've got to basically draw the line in the sand and start sending the message that uh, you can't just leave, you know. Do we think we'll get anything? Probably not. Um, if there's a civil judgment, and we have an eviction on this one, don't yes. we? Yes, and, and I do not suppress. So eviction for any meth eviction, we will not suppress the records. We are making sure those are left open. Mm -hmm. And so between both of those, those are the those are really only the two that you can really look at in terms of not housing folks. Um, because of the impact on other units. Mm -hmm. We didn't want uh, another housing authority or another market rate um, you know, apartment complex to deal with the same individual knowing mm -hmm. that this is likely going to happen again. And we're also talking about how do we talk with two private landlords about taking a very similar approach. Because a lot of times when they go through the eviction process, they just... Uh, They'll say, oh, I'll leave, I'll leave at the last minute. And so they don't go through the eviction and so you still have somebody with, that's contaminated a unit. And really talking to all the landlords about how important it is with meth that you continue through the eviction because then that becomes something that basically could save your, your partner down the road that you know that's a multi-family, that leases for multi-family. So we're working through all of these issues because it's, it's significant. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it impacts the residents. And yeah. mm -hmm. I don't think there's a single property where we haven't seen that contamination now. Maybe. No, not the little bit. No, yeah. no time. <laughs> but I mean, so, so, the, so the framework on this is even though we have age restricted units, we're seeing this all over. Privates are seeing it too. I mean, it's, we're no different. But we are we definitely um, talked to Molly and Lisa about going pretty hard on this one. So, at the suites, do you also check the mental health units as well? Or do you, yes. Or do you yes. Yeah, as management, we go into every unit every year. So, we're putting eyes on it. Well, this is great because this was brought up at several of the properties that I went to. Is you know what's being done to deal with this? Yeah. So at least there's an answer now. Okay. Is, is there? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, 
Is there some communication back to the residents about how hard we're going to get this individual, or do we just trust the brewer? Well, we just started these talks we started, okay. the last yeah. week because we got this um, the highest test results we've ever seen, right. and we got two in the same day, and that and now it's going to the next, the next unit over. So mm -hmm. we really we came hard two Fridays ago on this and just started working through it, talking with our attorneys, seeing what we needed to do. Um, I have 40 meth tests now sitting in my office, so we're ready to go, we got them. Because normally they were taking 30 days to come in, and these ones came in overnight, so. So part of it is, um, and we're being intentionally vague to a certain extent, but we also need, we're also trying to figure out what we need to know and who we need to inform. So we're aware that this individual moved their stuff into the storage unit. Mm -hmm. Now, go back in time to when we just took over and we had the eviction. I think you all were on the board when we had the eviction at the suites where literally Karen and I were helping. Mm -hmm. um, we had to rent a pod because of the way that one was done. And what we learned in that one is they had to line the pod with plastic and then they had to wrap certain um, household items so they wouldn't contaminate. Mm -hmm. And so we've got another thing we're trying to figure out is what's our obligation to the storage company? Mm -hmm. Because we know that there's contaminated materials. Mm -hmm. And so there, there's all these things we're chasing down on this. But no, I think once we, once we can um, work with the attorneys and really line out a course. I think, yeah, we're pretty overt about here's what we're doing. Because <laughs> um, we want to house you, but you can't do this because this one contaminated unit could kick another person out depending yeah. on yeah. And the I, I, results. I, uh, uh, I think I kick an innocent person out. Yeah. Uh, my, yeah, um, I am concerned about. Um, community hot water steam through all of our apartments. We don't have, I mean, we can, we have a thermostat, but we still have, you know, we share the pipes and whatever to get hot water heat, right? It's the pipes. return air that you're worried about. Uh, yeah, considering I'm two apartments down from the one that's contaminated. Do we have return air in the units here in the main system? Could you just find out? Yeah. Yeah, just find out. I'm, I'm, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, typically what I've been made aware of, it's not when the air that's blowing in, it's it's when you have the common return air where it sucks it into the main system. Okay. You know, we'll look at that. Do you guys have window units, so. Huh? Do you have window? She's worried about the, the water yeah. pipes. We gotta look into it. Yeah. Um, to your point, Cameron, yes, we do plan on doing, once we have enough information, mm -hmm. do plan on doing a communication effort, especially ahead of next year's recertifications. All those are done for 2022. And kind of tying, I want to probably jump on something Lisa's going to talk about, tie it into the meth units. Um, they made an application to uh, CDBG and it was approved, and so. We will be able to put, we're now going to put cameras in all our housing authority units. Okay. Those that don't the, have. The commons. The That is a scoop. <laughs> yeah. all, all of our facilities in yes. the common area. <laughs> I think that's going to make the residents that I spoke with very happy. Oh, yeah. yeah. They are very pro cameras. So, we'll, always. we'll get third floor too. We did not apply for Aspen. But we will. We, the next got, we have a. But we got, you know, the. the, the hand, what do you call them? The, the remote. Oh, the, the, one, yes. the little ones. The ones that we can move. I have some x rays in my office. We can put one on the third floor. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, but on. Because I should do an update on this think of it for this agenda, but um, the LHA staff did apply to the city CDBG program and on June 28th, on Tuesday, um, the council will consider approving those so that they were recommended awards for resurfacing Hearthstone and Lodge parking lot, including 
ADA modifications, um, redoing the playground at Aspen Meadows neighborhood, and the security cameras. So those are all recommended for approval. It's a total of a new playground. I said playground. Um, I think it's a total of one hundred and forty thousand dollars worth of projects. And then we're going to apply for more when they open up again at the end of summer. Back to the suites. Um, Can I ask a question? <laughs> yes. About so you mentioned the it, it's for new leases. Is what we're going to be asking for the math. So the okay. recertification because we decided a yearly lease, mm -hmm. right? And then so that recertification will also add that mm -hmm. language into it. Right. As well. Yeah. So it'll kind of be phased. Well, yeah, we'll right. start with the new move-ins yeah. here immediately. Existing folks will be on research. And so between now and the next in the next year, we should you have that about to Why? Yeah. Yes. Why couldn't you blanket, you know, um, you know, just a, a, a an amendment to the current lease real quick with everybody? Well, that's what we're working on is a disclosure. Yeah. That yeah space. Okay. All because right. though the crime free addendum does give us the okay to go in and test. Yes. We yeah. want even more clear that LHA is going to be proactive on this. We're going to be going in and testing at least annually. At minimum, if not more frequently. Okay. okay. Well, more frequently than you on what cause? It, um, it would be if we have cause. Okay. Like, like when we had, um, we had as a situation at the suites that it's already been an eviction. Yeah. We had the lady wrap something, put it on her neighbor's door. When they unwrapped it, it was a meth pipe. Right. So we went through eviction on that one. That unit okay. was tested. That's one of our other meth units at the suites that. Should be back online this week. We're just waiting for the final test. Um, that was a low contamination, but things like that. They're arrested. We find out they were in possession. Then we're going to want to test that unit, and we'll probably test them and three or four others in the building. Just so it's not just one person being tested at once. We're going and doing a group right. and rotating throughout the building. Reasonable we need well, yeah, I just want yeah. reasonable cause. Yeah, I don't want any, you know anything that's happening to like the uh, papers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, somebody who were we talking to last last week was somebody who well, can't you use the the um, city's dogs? So, and I'm like, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, we're not doing that. <laughs> we are not going down that road. They were up to, I had to, they were maybe, I guess I had to explain it. <laughs> and then and one other question on that. So, would we be testing? So, if we if we added that into the, the new recertification process, would we be testing at that point or the next recertification process? At that current recertification. That current recertification. So, when they start the paperwork, we're going to have them sign this disclosure saying, hey, we're going to come in because we start the recertifications 120 days uh -huh. before they're. They're due. Okay. So at that time, when they come in for their first initial appointment, we're going to have them sign that disclosure. The manager will come in, do the test, okay. and then then we know if we even need to move forward with the paperwork and do a lease renewal, or if they just need a notice of vacating. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So. And and Tracy's team and Marcus and Ruby, they're what a month or two ahead. What's the time? Yeah, the the same. Mm -hmm. Sorry, yeah, but they're actually ahead of schedule now, which we haven't been to that. that was and then are we going to have an appeal process in there at all? Or so what if so what if you know our initial test comes back, they get it positive, and they want to appeal it? Are we going to then have like the, you know the official? Well, we do have testing? a grievance policy that we yeah. can work through, and okay. they you know you have a proof of speed, like, you know we can work. Through the team. Yeah, and we do. We do know that if, if somebody doesn't move in with a clean test, we can't prove it was them. Right. You know. Um, but we still want to. This is all said without understanding how many yeah. pop up. Yes. But um, we do want that resident to be living in a safe unit. So yeah. whether it was them or not, we want to fix the situation. Also. I'm through the situation and how we can go about that. Yeah, what if it, I mean, I don't, know how, I don't know how long it sticks around, but what if it wasn't them? It was a previous resident. They've only been living up for a year. And have we thought anything to build liability that? We can't have quite doing that. Well, that's why this is, we are, we're checking those boxes first. Okay. Because we got to talk to insurance and legal just to make sure. This is our idea of what we'd like to do, but just to make sure. Because 
the, the, the problem that we are afraid of. We are apparently, we have enough policy in our insurance policy. New people, even going to that same company, are not getting those policies. So we need to protect that policy at all costs. So doing this in a preventative way is good. There's also risk we need to assess. Um, and keeping, especially everything low level, keeping it out of our deductible and keeping it out of claims as much as we can to the amount. And that may be, that's part of the insurance conversation, right. is that if we can really work with them and demonstrate how over time the, the cost of remediation is going to decrease dramatically, right. there may be a cost on the front end, but it's probably not as significant as what we're finding in some of our units and we're making an economic argument for them to then partner and how we're working. So we've got a lot of work to do. And just as an example, so for next door, I have a townhouse and that one's going to, they're estimated about 150. Um, the one here, we're probably going to be right around 5,000 because it wasn't as contaminated. So if we can catch them early where it's not contaminated or we catch it, like I said, really early in the door, our costs are nothing. Basically, our, what our deductible would have been. So. Okay. What is the cost of that one in this case? Um, the new one? Yeah. We're, I would say based on the trend and what we're seeing, probably close to 150 to 2, depending. Whole brand new. Yeah. Yeah. Everything. The, the last of that species, get it out to everything. The only thing that's still there was the studs and some, some pipes. All, everything that was in the living room, behind the drywall, had to be cut out too. The problem is anything that supports surface. Yes. Yeah. You know, I told Lisa, I go, at what point do we. Um, look at some type of stainless steel over the walls and the roof, <laughs> and then you texture and paint over that. Because then all you're having to theoretically do is to remove the paint and texture and then clean the stainless steel and go back. You know, those are things we're going to start looking at. Is and that's the part that's the biggest concern with this one. The numbers are so high that if it that chorus is the big scare is to get the wood. Because we've seen houses like that, but we had to deal with them with police so, so Typically, there were cookies when we get into it. Yeah. Well, three times, five years. Yeah. So, is that the level of cooking? Yeah. yeah. And not going to those units for years as well. So that's, so we, we have some suspicions. So, keep our eyes, check police reports daily. And we are telling the residents when we talk to them, we are telling the residents that we're, we're getting police reports today being a piece of the channel. So, they haven't gotten that message, then we'll just keep sending it. Well, the, the, this one, this last five went at the suites. They came up off the Boulder County arrest record, saw the name, reached out. They weren't arrested here in Longmont. They were um, arrested for a probation violation, meaning that they had a hot UA with their probation officer. So we worked with our local community to get the information from the report to proceed with the eviction. Those are all public records. Yeah. You just need to have that system. I saw Tracy. She's writing multiple dollar signs. signs. <laughs> well, I think we have to be careful if, if the same company is not doing that for other ones. We're getting ready to renew. Are they going to take our net policy away as well? Because our well, that's why I'm so we got to we got to work with them and protect that policy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so more for the suites. Positive note: the manager and the resource specialists have started having weekly coffees. With the residents, um, they just sit in the common area and invite the residents just to stop in because with the suites and the different personalities and types of people there, they're not really big on having social activities because um, they have 
yeah, their, their personalities. <laughs> so the, the management resource specialists sit in the, the common area and just make themselves available for those who want to come communicate and they try to connect them with other residents who may have similar want gardens, yeah, personalities who might want to walk together. So some are volunteering together. So we just started this a couple weeks ago and so far so good. The residents are really liking it. They have about 15 residents participate. So as for those senior, um, house construction um, replaced part of the second floor up here on this um, north wing two weeks ago because the subfloor, what was it, it was mill functioning, um, causing the vinyl to break. So they've done a test flooring. We're going to watch that for two months and then possibly have to come back and do the whole building. Mm -hmm. So on um, that, um, we are finding that this floating floor. Uh, methodology, installation methodology is is having issues everywhere that, that's been installed. Mm -hmm. like it's a, mm -hmm. um, especially, I mean, it's it's generally fine, but once you put walkers on it, it catches any little mm -hmm. thing, and it just gets worse and worse. So uh, we are watching to see how it performs. The new method that they did in the install in that hallway, seeing how it performs specifically with walkers and other you know things on the floor. Um, and then we'll come up with a plan for. Is it the material? It's the the subfloor, so it's this like noise attenuation floating layer that they're taking out and redoing. Um, so it is like a you know it's a warranty issue. This is not a right. an LHA issue. So and we're not the only property that are doing this. Now. Mm -hmm. So we're, nobody's going to do this type of insulation again. <laughs> That's what's happening. What well, I was asking is it the install? Is it the material that it's they the material. expect? Because yeah. well, because it, it's it's the material in the way that it's supposed to be manufactured in this floating. It's the mechanism. Yeah, of the mechanism. Yeah. Yeah. It's a combo. It's a kind of a manufacturing defect. Yeah. 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 Um, we do have next tool. Confirm meth a unit here. Um, currently waiting for bids for the cleaning. It was a low contamination, so that one will just be professionally cleaned by the contamination company and then retested and then handed back over to us. So that one we're only expecting about six weeks to be down. We are working two evictions, um, one for felony trespassing and one for lease stay up violations. Um, I did speak to our attorney the other day and he did state that if um, any residents reach out to advisory board members, city council members, anybody about evictions, just tell them to contact our attorney because they are in that legal process. Um, neighborhood, the meth contaminated unit um, will begin reconstruction actually this week. Um, the adjuster approved the bid. Um, the unit cost did exceed our coverage amount, so we will have to pay for this. And they sent us our check already. We should be getting that this week. Um, as well as said, the CBDG grant was approved for the playground and for the security cameras of the neighborhood. Briarwood, Carol touched on this, the Veterans Community Project has a group of volunteers fixing up and then we have one unit that was, um, we were granted eviction for on Friday for not paying the rent for four months. No, I just want to make a suggestion about the playground. Um, if whoever you use to design and build that wants to put in a zip line, no. Yeah. I don't know if you guys heard about the recent Cottonwood Park that mm -hmm. opened up in Louisville, but they've already had two kids injured. One was a pretty bad head injury. Oh, really? Just oh, so yeah, no. It's not that big. It's like okay. a yeah. So good. <laughs> They're it's fun, but they are not. They are a huge liability. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. It's successful. Yeah, you're. And Lisa works with our parks department too. Um, the kids are pretty good at watching stuff like that. Yeah. Um, Village Place, Kat McNeil, she's the former manager of Spring Creek and Fall River, is transferring over, transitioning over to Village Place. Um, we have kind of an AP transition worked out so the residents at Fall River, Spring Creek don't feel like she just up and left them because I know that's been some shaky ground over there. They really feel that they have been abandoned by everybody. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Rachel, we uh, hired a new manager, Rachel. She started two weeks ago, so she is concentrating on Fall River right now and Kat and her working together on Spring Creek, and then Kat's doing Village Place part-time, and then they're slowly gonna ease her out and over to Village Place full days. 
And Rachel's coming from Loveland Housing Authority and has a bunch of experience, so she, she should be a good fit for that district. She used to have five properties that she um, managed at the same time, so she's taking the two Spring Creek Fall River. Wait, you said she's from Loveland? Pardon me, I'm a little weary. No wish you will. <clears throat> but we have two Loveland people, and they ruined us. So I. Who was that? I, um, that was Murphy and um, the gal that sold the 5,000. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I can't remember her name. And I, um, that was the old place. It, yeah, but they were both from Loveland, and I'm like, okay, it felt like a conspiracy to ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, just get her indoctrinated with one mic. I uh, yeah, am. So, yeah, we are pretty confident. We feel like we made some good hires recently, so. Well, Loveland got new directors. Yeah, Loveland. Mm-hmm. So they kind of had a yeah. bit of a change over too. Okay. They yeah. had a new ED. I feel better now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, Loveland's actually, they're doing some really cool yeah, things. Yeah, they They have always done really cool things. Right. I think they had a dip of some sort, but yeah. they've always done beautiful stuff. So, I'm, I am. We'll give her a chance. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to be looking twice. <laughs> <laughs> But forgive, but never forget. <laughs> I totally forget. Yeah. Uh, let so, it prove yourself. Right? Yeah. For Creek, we are addressing a meth contaminated unit there, too. It was another lower scale, um, just requiring the testing, the cleaning, and then a retest. So we're hoping to have, we're pending the final testing results on that unit, so we're hoping to have that unit back in our um, inventory in the next week, as soon as those test results come in. Um, in lieu of the coffee conversations, we had an ice cream social. Um, fire department was supposed to attend, but they got on a call, so they did not attend. So we just had an elongated um, coffee, um, ice cream social there. Um, new manager, Rachel, like I said, hired. Um, and Kat's transitioning over to Village Place. And then we got the CBDG grant for the security cameras at Spring Creek as well. Awesome. Um, Fall River, the new manager, same thing. The CBDG grant for the cameras there. And then we had one resident that we were granted eviction for on Friday for um, not paying their rent for multiple months. Lisa? Yes. I have a question. And this actually came up when I was doing interviews over there. And I went by this morning just to double check. I believe this is a resident that lives there with the truck. Mm-hmm. And, and the they trailer. got all of that mess. He's been posted there. by the attorney. So he is, um, I think he's scheduled for court not the, not the, maybe July 1st. Trying to think because I have, we're only allowed two cases a week, so I have, mm-hmm. I have like eight pending. So he, he is, he's been posted, he's been served multiple notices, he's had, we've already posted the 10 days for possession. So, and I, I've actually swing by there on a regular basis and have multiple photos. I sent the police some photos of where it was worse than it normally is. So late at night, mm-hmm. it gets worse, and then yeah. the problem is that it's now made its way to the picnic table. Yeah. It's adjacent to it, and so we're going through the process. Plus the, the in the front door area. Place. Yeah. 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 yeah, the motorcycle actually is his too, that, so he has all that area. And multiple times, my maintenance guys have disposed of the items. Um, I've sent him emails even on Saturdays and Sundays because I'll drive through and see that there's a safety hazard out there, mm-hmm. and I will call him, leave him voicemails, send him an email, have, go post notice on his door and says you have three hours to remove this device or I will have maintenance sort of way. He's had saws out there mm-hmm. and since we're in the middle of a neighborhood yeah. compressor, there, there's just so much gasoline cans. Um, so maintenance, I work with maintenance daily on that almost. Yeah. It, it changes. Yeah, it's still there. Yeah. Is that somebody, a different somebody than staying. Guy? So he's staying at that same sort of I've seen times when somebody just, there will be like a TV, there's a TV or something on, um, I was going to talk to you about it, but oh. we'll, we'll catch up. But yeah, I've seen lights and TVs on in there. Mm-hmm. So we we'll step in, in front of his front door, and then the neighbor across the hall sends me pictures. So the attorney gets pictures almost daily of mm-hmm. what the outside looks like and what the inside looks like. Mm-hmm. So that one is yeah. Yeah, look at those I sent you. You should be able to see the TV. Right. Okay. Uh, it, it, it's still two court cases a week, so. Yep. She's basically every Friday. Yeah. yeah. We have a Friday morning meeting, and I do it from the parking lot of the courthouse, and I'm talking to them on teams, walking in, and like, okay, I gotta go. There's security now. Maybe we should change that meeting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hearthstone 
Calvin Lodge um, fill the maintenance position. Um, the new our new guy, Kyler Calvin, has been an asset to LHA already. Oh, I, I heard wonderful things about him. They love him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, at the suites, just as an example, um, he's at Hearthstone and Lodge, but the suites, we had one of the big AC units go down. He's certified. Um, he, he was actually a consultant for our H&M Mechanical, who's done a lot of hard work over the years. He was oh, their right. consultant. Yeah. So he came in, assessed it all. Okay, found the part from the last one in the state of Colorado. Him and Dave picked it up on a Saturday, rented a crane, did all the work in house for less than three thousand when the bids were over twelve thousand. Yeah. So yeah, they said that they love him because he just gets stuff done. Mm -hmm. He he's not he's very resourceful and quick and responsive. And he came with he came with all his own tools. Even he has all everything you could ever think of. He has this fully stocked work truck and skills galore. So we yeah. utilize yeah. him. Lisa's hires on the maintenance side mm -hmm. have been really good because now we have a cow. Well, the, we have two that are certified as boilers. Mm -hmm. So instead of contracting that out, they can do it. As the city, we could actually consult with them on our boilers that, because we don't have, I think, anyone certified on boilers. And then, so just the, the level of expertise that they brought in has been tremendous. And at the end of the day, it's saving us a lot of money. Hearthstone, um, we had two elevator contracts. Um, probably brought the up in budget meetings before. We had two elevator contracts last year. It's been fighting them tooth and nail to get that second one canceled. We just got that canceled last week. Um, got a grant for the security cameras there and a grant for the parking lot repairs. The Hearthstone, we do have, it's not on here, the elevator has been down for a week, but it should be up to date. Up to date, they tracked down the part that went missing via FedEx, but did they, get it? they have it. They sure. says the company says they have it, so they're supposed to be there this morning to start the repairs. We've tried Mickey Mouse repairs. We've tried everything. They tried fix the current. It was a board that was out, unfortunately not manufactured anymore. They tried to repair our board, ordered a new one, got lost. Mm -hmm. But hopefully up today. Mm -hmm. Lodge the grant for the cameras and the grant for the parking lot repairs. Um, then the. The open positions we have, we are still looking to um, open the custodian position that will replace our contract with custodian. We're actually working to move that in the city's hiring process. That position we posted last October, it's just been on Indeed and other forums. Um, I'm working with the city right now to bring it under them so that we can hopefully streamline the hiring process and get that in faster because it should not take us that long to hire a custodian. Um, we are recruiting still for an assistant manager for the LHA tax credit properties, which will help fill in a gap here at Aspen Meadows and probably Village Place and a few other properties. We have one right now, but we need the second one to replace Aaron Robinson. And then we, um, our building attendant positions went live last week, which is to replace the suite security, <coughs> which currently we do not have security at the suite. But our maintenance team is stepping it up and doing every time they have an on call after hours and on the weekends they're going over and doing a sweep of the grounds, put an eye on it. We've asked for extra patrol through the police. In the meantime, mm -hmm. all right, on to uh, issues of bolts. Uh, so um, we've made some progress from March to April, um, but. Right now, my accountant is taking any of the past residents that have balances due and monitoring that first letters went out, second letters went out, and then once the third letters went out, basically saying we're turning you over to collections. Um, determining what that threshold is still needs to happen, and I don't think we've done that. Like, if it's $100, that's, that's more to write off than actually sending it to collections. Um, so that's something we probably want to add. Um, but my error was a keying error. I had added too much into the Aspen Meadows neighborhood. The last meeting we had a the question about it not matching the financials, and that was just me putting an additional amount in there. Um, so I'll make sure I double check that. Um, other than that, um, the managers are doing their delinquency reports on any current residents. Um, but we're monitoring and tracking. And then Heather has also started, now that we're in our summer mode and her audit's over, <laughs> that um, 
she had started looking at all the other tenants. She's been working on the suites with her and, and stuff like that to actually take a look at those ledgers. A lot of what was happening is it's just on the wrong side. It's, you know, charged the subsidy or, or vice versa. Mm -hmm. But you have to do the corrections to get it on the right ledgers. Mm -hmm. um, and we found that when we broke off the old past tenants, it caused chaos in the system because that is what was occurring. So, <laughs> um, so that's, does anybody have any questions on the HVAC rule? I mean, you're going to see some amounts start going up because of the meth units, um, Aspen Mills neighborhood, and you know all the ones that were mentioned. They're going to get those charges back to them. Um, I don't know that we've actually. I, I know there was discussion at one of our meetings where what is the charge? Are we charging them full costs that were incurred because we're getting insurance? I don't know that we've ever really decided that mechanism of chargeback. I know it was was asked. What well, was insurance going after them at all? Subrogation. Mm -hmm. It might be. I'm not for any of the tenants information. They don't. They just ask for the support for it. Right? Mm -hmm. Do we just go, would we just go after our deductible plus any overage to make us whole? That's, that's what I don't know. You know, I mean. Oh, no, that would, that's the attorneys that have figured Makes sense for the attorneys to call the insurance attorneys in too. So we get the plan to better. I don't know if they want to spend their money on it. Yeah, it's, it's kind of changing. Well, yeah, so, or they may be willing to add it to our claim. Well, yeah. for the insurance, if we just yeah, we figure our premiums in the end will increase. So, yeah, I mean, I would say we want to go after the whole amount. Yeah. When you said collections, are those just past tenants that would be going after for collections, or are those even current tenants as well? We haven't really decided current tenants. It's yeah. only been past tenants at the moment. Right. I mean, I know they're trying to work with the current tenants, well, um, yeah. and, then it, and then it usually comes to the eviction process, right? Exactly. Right. 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 So, that's, so that's what I was assuming. Yeah. Was, it's all the current uh, past tenants. So yeah. It's very much yeah. Okay. And try to get payment plans if we can. Right. Um, for those current tenants, if they're having issues, or give them resources for additional subsidy if, if they can get it. Um, so part of it is they are partnering with different organizations and trying to catch people up. Mm -hmm. But in the catch up, they're also evaluating whether or not they can stay caught up. Mm -hmm. And so even some of the partner organizations may or may not assist an individual if they don't feel like they can stay caught up once they baseline. So there's another piece to that conversation. Well, because you got your current rent plus the past due rent. Right, and they'll, and they'll catch them up yeah. if they think they can stay current once they catch them up. But there's been some conversation on some that they're like, yeah, we don't even, we'll just be back in this in X months. And so. Yeah. Why don't you move on to things? So, um, so there's a couple of properties, both Aspen Meadows neighborhood and Spring Creek, where we're over the vacancy um, dollars that was budgeted. Um, some of that is due to, um, I don't know about Spring Creek for sure, but definitely Aspen Meadows neighborhood is due to the meth unit that has been on the <laughs> for a considerable amount of time. Um, so, see concerns there. The other concern was obviously snow removal. We went over budget. Um, and in some properties, not all. Um, we are also um, kind of getting close because we haven't hired. Our intention was to have a custodian in house sooner than later. And so, since we had to do through third party organizations and get to a point where we're also going to be going over budget in that area if we don't get a custodian hired soon mm -hmm. um, because we didn't accommodate for the price that comes from a third party vendor. Are you just moving that to a city position? Yeah, well, this, we posted it last October before we were incorporated with the city. So I'm working with um, Emily over there to get you know, the whole unit system. Okay. So it's still an LHA position, but it's just- Yeah, sorry, yeah. Okay. 
And those are individual items that we're seeing go over budget in total. We're not over budget annually, um, but those are some of the situations that, that we're seeing um, on the financials. So, Kendra, um, on yeah. 615 May, yes. that utility expense is quite. That's an error. Oh, um, there's. <laughs> yes, I saw that. And I actually text, texted my account and I go, I think I did something wrong here. Um, yeah. It should be down. So, that is actually the maintenance expense. And that's actually most of that is majority snow removal. Okay. So, um, you shouldn't see any tenant services expense. That 329 is actually what the utility is. Because um, we did find that within the lease for 615 name, they were supposed to actually have the utilities in their name, mm -hmm. and they never did. So there's probably a little portion of that that was paid by us until they got their utilities switched over. So that's their for Senator, yeah, yeah. Do we pass so, on all those costs to them, or do we bear some of those costs? Um, it should be in tenant income. I know that. I know that. Um, Heather for this year, so it didn't happen in the prior years because okay. we couldn't do that. Um, but this year, anything that came that they had got switched over got charged back to them on their okay. Even snow removal? Maybe they fix? No, see, in their contract it says that we pay for the snow removal. So that is where it's. Yeah. yeah, so we're not, yeah. That's not typical. Huh? <laughs> no. Yeah, so we share the drive with Village Place. Their main drive way is Village Place off of Maine. So it's just that main drive, they don't, they're not doing snow removal in the spaces. So because it's shared, that's probably why. It's just, yeah, it's just not doing their sidewalk. So it's just the one right in front of the parking spaces that loop around the front, the sidewalk. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do their own sidewalk in the next lease. Well, they're asking for it now because we know because we get it. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to buy it? They, they want to know what their options are because we did tell them we would come back to them in June with the options. Okay. That may be something we come back yeah. to the board with is mm -hmm. a sell of that because obviously the, the budget for it's not for eight on the lease yeah. rate. It may, may, may make more sense to sell that. Well, you got new places coming up, so getting rid of one. I mean, this, this is definitely something that we wanted to do It's part of this education or at least to make sure that we've been tracking down all the That's stuff. That's what we're waiting yep. So we've got, we've got some interesting file reports and for some reason that building is looped in to the tax credits. We're trying to figure that all out because we want them separated mm -hmm. so that we could, we don't need to be running that building. Mm -hmm. um, so that just jumped me in the high gear about checking our all of our documentation. And that one's weird because it's actually shown on the financials as an LHA property, mm -hmm. six fifteen mm -hmm. May, mm -hmm. but it's in the tax credits for, for Village Place, which is an LHDC property. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we had some the title history is. It's a little clouded. It's a little weird. <laughs> well, and even LHC can't remember. Can you do a client title action if it's where you want it to get it? If it doesn't mess up your life tech? That's Would you like to be with me later? That's not title. I think it's titled under LHA. I think it's titled under LHA. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's the title under LHA. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's the, but it's connected to the line tags on your village board. Yeah. We can't figure out why. So. We think they probably did. They probably did tie quiet tie work, and that's what moved it over. Mm -hmm. The question is, could it be moved over? Yeah. But this is probably before it happened. Anybody in this room? But is the compliance done for that? For those places? Yeah. So we're in year uh, year fifteen, started January twenty twenty two, out of fifteen years. Even with Sarah, he's like, you're going to use 
you know, you can see the twitch. It's got. Kind of, but speaking of speaking of selling, you know, something that we've thought about as we get more units on, and as BCP gets more established, is really talking to them about the entire Briarwood property um, because there's an affinity and mission in that. You know, if they're building the 26 tiny homes to house homeless beds, and we can, as we're bringing new units on, can we locate or maybe contract with them to fill the homeless beds that they manage as we have vacancies and then look at a point where we can sell to them? That may start making a lot of sense to, because they're, we're all trying to house the same population generally, and so we think that may help from a cash flow standpoint. And, and an operational piece, and we've been interested um, in the executive director wants to get the piece so on and do quality and that.
when we get real close to, to the, the end, we'll go ahead and do another lottery and probably add another 150. And we'll do that as, as many times as we need to. We just did it in February, so I'm really surprised at the number. I would say at least 40% of the people are not going to get the whole list So it's a high number. We're working right through that really quick. Do we just send a letter? And the, and call. We do we do one courtesy call. What about email? Yeah. Because I'll be honest, I don't answer my phone if I don't need a number. Yeah, they leave messages. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We have people yeah. tell me they don't leave messages, they don't send the messages. Yeah. It's weird. This generation is like I I I love visual voicemail, but uh, if we don't leave a message, I don't call them. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't need a car to send a warranty. I'm good. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I might really <laughs> want one. You know, you know, something you might think about too on that furnace tab. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we need some TVs and texts or some stuff. That's awesome. Yeah, and we we have people come in and check and we find out that they um, they received a letter and they had moved and they had. So we'll do a reasonable accommodation. A lot of people are homeless. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they haven't set up a P.O. box number, um, or they're, they're out of the, the city at that point. So, you know, we're real flexible about putting them back on if we get into their danger that they're homeless. Anything else? Uh, other coming to the director? Anything else? I think I jumped in. They're all there, so I'm good. All right, nine other business. Yes. We wish to thank you for all the years of service you uh, contributed to the Longmont Housing Authority as a commissioner and now as an advisory board member. Um, you're engraving us. Like a year ago. <laughs> 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 it feels like 150 years something. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. I'm sorry to to, uh, to cut and run, but um, it's been a it's been a journey, and I'm glad to be part of it. So. And I'm really excited with the direction it's taken since I started. Well, it's nice to see things oh. go through a rocky patch yeah. and then actually come out on the other side. Better than I ever saw it. So. Yeah, and you're leaving on the upside. Yeah. 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 Good time. Yeah, you've been through the trenches. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you all. This is, this is wonderful. I appreciate it. Well, it's been great. Well, and from the staff perspective, thanks for hanging in there with us. <laughs> um, I remember the first conversation that I was and just staying with us. Um, well, I remember that first conversation thinking, oh, I hope he says yes. <laughs> <laughs> if he says no, I don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> you have no idea how many prayers behind you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> what you didn't realize is that afterwards, um, and I can still visually see where we were all sitting in the conference room right. after you left, and it was a deer in the headlights look. And right. Kathy, Karen, and I, none of us wanted to do this. I mean, I think that's the, but I think we all realized we had to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's when we just said, we can't fail now. Yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. But I think you all hanging with us through this, um, and Arlene coming on in the middle of it. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. But all of you, but, but just being there, you know, that first run, I can't tell you how many times I call Cameron and go, this is going on, here's what's happening, and then mm -hmm. I remember a conversation we had out with Hope, and you said, well, I think it was when you became chair, and you go, oh, so my wife just wants to know, is it going to be more than it is, <laughs> and uh, I said, no, hopefully it'll be less than it was, mm -hmm. um, and so, just thanks, because um, I know we, we were, we taxed you earlier. Yeah, that's so, what it is. It was good work. So. It's good to be a part of this group. Yep. And now they're doing amazing work. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah.
we can put a bench at one of the new properties in his honor. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> we're hoping to see you, see you through. But we have the benches here. We put a little, little oh, fun. Put a on the toilet paper. Just take it for a break. Oh, shit. You have to go on one that uh, is two inches. Two inches. Two inches. Two inches. <laughs> yeah. If you're out, call. <laughs> That's good. <laughs>